women issues. There, I said it. Cheers to that. I wish I would be lying when I said that I actually do struggle to finish series a lot. I think that if you've been on my channel for a while, it comes as no surprise that I read the first book in a series, sometimes even the second book, and then I just don't carry on. Whether it's the fear of abandoning a world that I am absolutely in love with, or maybe just because my brain cannot wire itself to actually carry through with finishing the series. Whatever the reason, it's actually pretty frustrating because there are series that I've started and I really want to see how they end, and series are comforting for me. I love the idea of spending lots of time with the same characters in the same world with the same magic system And sometimes you just don't want to let go But 2023 friends will make that the year of actually either catching up with ongoing series or actually finish series that I've started because I want to see how it goes. And the first one I've got for you, the Art of a Side series. When <laughs> you'll choose to me, choose to me, choose to me. I started this series in 2020. No joke. I read Scythe in that peak between like summer and fall is when I read Scythe for the very first time and the only time. But fell in love with it. I bought the rest of the series because I wanted to see what was going to happen. And then I didn't read Thunderhead up until a year later. And now it's been over a year since I've read Thunderhead and asked me if I've actually bothered to pick up the toll. I've put this in countless TBRs. I've told myself countless of times that I was actually gonna read this book and I was gonna love it and enjoy it. And I'm just scared. I will say I have been very susceptible to the public's opinion in several instances, including this. A lot of people hate this book and I think that's made me very, very scared to walk into this because I don't want the very last book in the series to ruin a series or a trilogy that I've been really loving. However, I love the premise of Scythe. I love the characters, you guys know this. It's set in a world where war and death have been conquered. There are none of the global issues that we see nowadays. And so in order to keep a semblance of balance in this world, they create the Scythe Dom. The Scythe Dom is an organization that takes care of literally offing people <laughs> in like the kindest way possible. It's a very randomized system, but they do that because there needs to be a balance of who lives and who dies. And so that's the way they choose to do it. And we in particular follow our main two characters, Sidra and Rowan, as they become Scythe apprentices and they learn the ins and outs of the system in this organization, but like always, it's a system. So the system will have its set of biases. The system will be corrupt in ways. And although corruption and those biases do not look the same way as our current world, the commentary on it is absolutely phenomenal. So I always have a great time with these books, but for this last one, I'm scared. Another series I have to finish is the Kiss Quotient series by Helen Huang. This is the last book as well, and this is The Hard Principle. Now this one I've heard really great things about, so in that regard, I'm not too scared to go into this. I'm actually quite hyped up to pick this up. I think it's just a matter of actually picking it up. I don't tend to reach for romance as often. However, these are romance companion novels. So although you get to see Easter eggs and like sneak peeks to couples in the previous books, each book stands on its own, which I quite like. I loved the first book, kind of iffy about the second one, but this one, again, because of the people's reception and the way that they talk about this book, I feel like I really, really love this. So in this one, we follow our main character, Anna. And Anna finds herself achieving all of the success she's ever longed for after one YouTube video goes viral. However, she starts experiencing the good old burnout trying to achieve the virality of that first video. In the midst of all of that, her boyfriend's like, hey, baby girl, how about we have an open relationship? And that's when she meets Quan, who is a character that we've seen before in the series. And they strike up a one night stand, which then becomes a two night stand and then a three night stand. And the more they delve into their relationship, they realize that it's not a one night stand, a night stand of anything really. However, there are things happening in Anna's personal life that will sort of shift the order of things and will make it a little bit harder to figure things out. Listen, I love me a good romance that is very romantic while also being very fictional and tropey. I like those things, but I also like the sprinkle of reality and this seems to have a shower of reality. And I am actually very excited about it. It's the Frost Art series by Jamie Littler. I also have to finish this. I own all the audiobooks for the series. So I've already read book one and I really, really need to get through the series because Frost Heart is one of the best middle grades I've ever read. It is the perfect amount of wholesome winter vibes, 
while also dealing with some very human themes as always. And so in the series, we follow Ash, whose parents have been missing for a little while. And he has always been adamant on the fact that they're not dead. They're just disappeared. Like, where are they? Why haven't they come back? And so in book one, we not only see him embarking on a journey to find his parents with a ship, obviously called the Frostheart, with a whole new crew of people that he has never seen before, with his companion Yeti called Tobu. But we also see him really try and figure out exactly what powers he has, exactly what that means for him, and trying to figure out a little song, a little puzzle moment. His parents have left him to, again, figure out where they are. And the vibes were just elite in the first one. The audiobook also was really, really good. I know the audiobook is like not available everywhere, or at least it wasn't back when I read it. But honestly, the audiobook, I would say, is part of the way to go because it is absolutely incredible. We want to talk about my toxic trait, huh? Starting books and not finishing them. Aside from even starting series and not finishing them, literally started with Free the Stars by Hafsa Faisal, which is the sequel to We Hunt the Flame, and also is the last installment in the Sands of Arawiya duology. Got eight pages in. I was very excited for it too. I was listening to like the Game of Thrones soundtrack. I was doing the absolute most. Ask me. Obviously, you've got the answer. If I finished it, I didn't. We've got Safita and Nasir, and both of them are pretending to be things they are not in order to survive. Safita is known as the hunter because if she reveals herself to be a woman, she will face the consequences of her actions, quote unquote. She lives obviously in a very patriarchal structure where it is not allowed for women to do these things and she does this in order to keep her hometown fed and alive and on the other hand Nasir is the sultan's son he is an assassin and so they both embark on a mission that overlaps incidentally the world is being overrun by the Ars which is a magical entity that is covering the land in shadow now Safira is on her way to acquire a magical artifact an ancient one at that that will help stop the Ars and save everybody while Nasir's mission is to fetch the artifact and kill the hunter. It is right on the cusp of that YA writing that feels more adult. The pacing of it more than anything is very adult. All of the nuances of the world just on a social commentary level. I really want to finish the Darius the Great duology next year. I read the first one in audiobook format this year. Absolutely adored it, so I really want to borrow the audiobook for this one too. Read it and hopefully fall in love with it in the same way that I fell in love with book one. Now in this one we follow Darius who is half Iranian, half American, and he really struggles to come to to his identity. He feels so much more connected to his dad's side of things, not only because of the already pre-existing difficulty of existing in two different spaces, in two different cultures, and how sometimes some people make you feel inadequate for not being fully this or fully that, which is a subject matter in and of itself. But on top of that, his mom very inadvertently has made him feel very inadequate with his Iranian side. She has put a lot more effort into really teaching the ways to Darius sibling, however, not necessarily him. But all of this will take a turn when finally he goes to visit his mom's family in Iran, and he starts really learning about the culture, about that side of his identity, and about everything that it entails. And I absolutely love how the conversation is established. It is done in a way that feels very, very real and sustainable, while also being very nuanced, but also not being extremely heavy on the reader, which it can oftentimes be a very heavy subject, because because it is very delicate. And so I absolutely love the journey that he goes through in book one and all of the little realizations and the way he comes to towards the end in several different ways. And so I'm very excited to see what book two will do because if book one was any indication, I think this one will be very good as well. This one's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I have to say much about the Percy Jackson series. I have been saying for the entirety of my channel's life, so almost three years now, that I was going to reread Percy Jackson so that I could then reread some of the Heroes of Olympus books and finally finish the Heroes of Olympus series. And I am still on the Percy Jackson series. So I am hoping that towards the beginning of 2023, this will be something that I will have already smashed out because I truly want to make 2023 the year of finishing the Heroes of Olympus finally because I've been reading that series officially next year for a decade. This is the last book in the Percy Jackson series. This is the last Olympian. I've already read this before, but it was such a long time ago that I really want to annihilate the series so I can do a little refresh and then sort of move on. So I'm currently in the Battle of the Labyrinth. And I mean, what is there to say at this point? I've been talking about Percy for a really long time now. 
now on my channel and I absolutely love the series. I mean, beyond the message of ADHD and dyslexia, because oftentimes just on a societal level, it's still something that nowadays we see others shunning people with ADHD and with dyslexia. And I love how Rick Riordan has always made it a point in his books to really highlight the empowerment of that and how that makes nobody less than and how people are extremely capable still. And so I absolutely adore that about the series. I think just on an empowerment level, it's really, really cool. And he uses a lot of the oftentimes negative stereotypes or what people have twisted to now be a negative stereotype. He uses them in the series to prove people that there is still power in those things. And so just in terms of the thematic statements of the series, I absolutely adore that. And obviously you've got great gods and you've got mythology and you've got it in a way that is very accessible to everybody. Because oftentimes Greek mythology, I mean, as any mythology, it's very nuanced. It's got a lot of layers to it. And so I love how he has warped all of that and made it super fun for everybody to enjoy. And that's, that's kind of what I love about the series. So the last one. We are going on two years, okay? Two years of me having started the series. We can't, we can't keep going. The All Souls trilogy by Deborah Harkness, we need to finish this in 2023. I guess there are more books incoming, but I don't know if it's still within this or if it's gonna be something to, listen, I don't have time to think about that. So let's just say either finish or catch up with the All Souls trilogy because I absolutely adored book one. I never thought I'd be interested in a sci-fi fantasy paranormal romance that dealt with alcohol alchemy and history. However, Deborah Harkness has a very specific way of making those things appealing to the reader. Primarily, she is a historian, so all of this is written in a way that is incredibly fascinating, which I absolutely love. And so in this one, we follow our main character, Diana, who is a witch. She hates admitting that she's a witch, though. Like, she hates the fact that that is a part of who she is. And so she lives a very normal life, very non-magic. However, she ends up pulling the Ashmole 782, which is a very ancient text that is supposed to be like lost, like nobody's supposed to touch this, half this, anything. So she ends up grabbing it from the Bodleian Library and that ends up unleashing <laughs> an interspecies war between vampires, witches, werewolves, all the thing, all the mystical creatures that exist in this world. And so she will team up with a little hunky sexy vampire by the name of Matthew in order to figure things out, stop this once and for all, except that they fall in love and that's also forbidden. And so we love a good paranormal romance with a little forbidden romance thrown in there. It's very good, very historical alchemy is thrown in here. It's very hot. I didn't think I would ever say that, but it is. I'm still stuck on Shadow of Night, which is book two. Now, this is not the copy I'm reading. This is a new copy. I think I got a hundred and something pages in, 200 and something pages in, but I got stuck because book two is very, very slow. And I think I wasn't in the right mindset when I was reading it. And now I need to finish this. And now we step into Sanderson land because I've got two series that I would love to either finish, well, one finish and the other one to catch up on. And that is first of all, Mistborn era one, because I restarted Mistborn and I read the final empire. I am filming a vlog on it. It's just going very slow. So I read the final empire. I've got all the footage for that. I have yet to start The Well of Ascension and I also have to go through the Hero Ages. And I thought I would be able to do all of that in a single month. However, I'm not the type of reader I've come to figure out. Like I love to binge series sometimes, but they have to be like on the shorter end of things. This gets quite lengthy when you kind of add all three to the pot. And so I am hoping that next year, maybe of reading one book one month and then the other one another month, I'll be able to knock it out. And so I've got 12 months to do it. Let's see how long it will take me to get through the series. And last but not least, Stormlight. I am literally the absolute worst because I read The Way of Kings last year. I have attempted to read Words of Radiance twice now and I get stuck in the same exact spot because I get distracted with other things and I have yet to catch up on Stormlight, but I really, really want to. I still obviously as you can see have to get through everything but way of kings and i really want to do that next year i really want to catch up and get through the novellas and get through the actual book installments and just do all the things stormlight in my opinion stays superior than mistborn it's just my own personal preference i think just rose wise stormlight there's something so poetic about it that i just absolutely adore and gobble gobble up and i just need to see what happens i need to see what's gonna happen next 
context because the end of book one was absolute insanity and what I've read of book two so far has also been super interesting. I've heard of some really great scenes in both Words of Radiance and Oathbringer that I cannot wait to get into. So in this one, things are a little bit more convoluted in terms of a plot. We have got the Knights Radiant who were an ancient order of obviously knights and they no longer exist. However, they left behind shard blades and shard plates, which when used by certain individuals enhances their strength, their prowess, their ability their powers, everything. And there's an ongoing war in this. And so we will follow three main characters, at least in the first book. We've got Kaladin, who is a bridge man. They literally carry bridges over chasms in order to allow the army to plow through and carry on with the war. We've got Dalinar, who is the king's brother, who keeps dreaming of this text called The Way of Kings. He doesn't know how it is connected to anything, but he will find out eventually. And we've got Shalon, who is a scholar, and she will make some really good discoveries to aid with everything happening. And it's really good. I freaking love Stormlight. And that's it for today, friends. Those are all of the series that I would love to finish soon, also known as in 2023. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a massive thumbs up down below and let a girl know down in the comments what are some series that you would love to get to soon and finish those. Catch up with them. Let a girl know all of that down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you want to support the channel further, I do have a Patreon, which is always linked down below alongside all of my socials. And yes, I love you guys so, so much and I will see you on the next one. Bye!